Oh, hello. Today we're starting a new reading vlog project, uh, one that was inspired by a new bookstore that has opened up in my neighborhood. It is called Novelette. It is adorable and so aesthetically pleasing. It's very much reflecting the East Nashville vibe, which is, I feel like East Nashville is the closest thing Nashville has to a West Coast, like sort of Pacific Northwest kind of vibe. It reminds me a little bit of how I felt living in Vancouver, uh, in that it is the closest thing we have to sort of like hippie flavors of yuppies as opposed to preppy flavors of yuppie. That's more like a West Nashville vibe. So, I felt like this bookstore was a welcome addition to our neighborhood. We have a couple of bookstores on this side of town. Um, and this one in particular, is just like really bright and fun. They specialize, I believe, in sort of like manga and graphic novel kind of picks. I feel like they had a really good selection and a lot of square footage um, for an independent bookstore. Like they were carrying a lot of different things. They also have like the requisite murals, which is like a thing in Nashville. People are obsessed with murals, so they have that. All in all, this was just a very vibey kind of store. I was excited to go to it for the first time. And while I was there, it occurred to me that in such a beautiful bookstore, maybe this would be an opportunity to do something I've been wanting to do, which was doing basically cover buys in a bookstore. So I didn't really want to buy anything that I had a specific reason to buy it other than I found it aesthetically pleasing. And I kind of wanted to, so like there's that angle of sort of, can you judge a book by its cover? I was influenced to buy all of these because of the cover or the title or some combination thereof. And then also this idea of being kind of that girl on Bookstagram or Book Talk. Now, he okay, here's the deal, guys. I know I'm too old to care about this. But I see certain creators who their content is always so aesthetically pleasing. They have a certain kind of, I don't know, vibe that feels very aspirational. And they always have these beautiful books. Like they're always, it seems like they're reading books with beautiful covers all the time. And so I thought maybe this could also be my attempt to be that bookstagram girly, that book talk girly who just like has beautiful aesthetics around the books that she's reading. I should note also just like some intrinsic privilege inherent in the entire idea of being aspirational in terms of your social media postings. But we'll talk about that at a different point in the video. For now, project is I went into Novelette and I picked four books that stood out to me pretty much only because of the cover or some kind of bit of the marketing and how the book felt in the space of Novelette. Because I feel like all these go very much with that shop's aesthetic. So first I picked up A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn, which I was very drawn to the artwork of this, the fact that there was like tea. And then when I was reading a little bit in the cover copy, it sounds like it's tea based magic. And I think maybe somebody has recommended this to me, but it's YA fantasy. And I feel like this is just sort of, you can definitely see sort of like the Asian influences on the art here, but also it's just so bright and colorful and it really just grabbed me. So this is pick number one, pick number two, I know nothing like I had not this is of these the only one where I had not heard at all of the book or the author at all. And that is Sp The Splendid City by Karen Hewler. I picked this because it looked like I mean, we have a cat with a gun. And then we have like a witch. And so my guess when I was looking at this was that it was some kind of speculative mystery, maybe. Uh, which possibly that's true. Eleanor, a rebellious young witch, has been put under house arrest with her lecherous co-worker Stan, who loves craft beer, fish tacos, and shooting people. Eleanor has little time for Stan. That's why she has turned him into a talking cat. Besides, she's got a job to do, locate a missing witch who seems to be mysteriously linked to the water shortages affecting the city. Okay, so yeah, it's like a speculative mystery of some kind. It looks very, yeah, it says thoroughly original and quirky novel. It looks very quirky, and I was drawn in by the subject matter of this one, so. I had not heard of this at all. I have no idea how we'll do with that. Okay, this one I picked because it reminds me of a very particular vibe that I get recommended on Instagram a lot for new releases where it's, it's just a mood. It's a lot of color blocking. And I feel like this is the kind of cover that is 
used in some of the most that girl kind of postings I've seen. And that's When I'm Gone, Look For Me in the East by Quan Berry. I will say I was also influenced when I saw the cover, obviously I was very drawn to it just like, ooh, this reminds me of sort of the vibe of some of the covers that I'm thinking of and posts that I've seen. But I also really enjoyed We Ride Upon Sticks, which I read earlier this year upon the recommendation of some of my patrons. So I do know this author, so that I think also increased the attraction and sort of the decision to make this the one that represented this sort of evocative color blocking trend that I've seen on different posts. And then finally, I thought I would pick one that I not only liked the vibrancy of the cover, but I also love the title. Like the title was also very beautiful. And that is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Ekweke Amezi. I have heard good things about this author. Like I know their work is very popular. I want to say that they're the author of Pet, maybe, which I feel like has been a big one. Yeah, Pet. But I think that's YA. I want to say that this might be a romance. I think I've heard that. So I don't really know anything about this particular book other than that, but I just loved this cover. I loved how bright it was. I loved the lusciousness of the lips on the cover. And I don't know, I just thought the title was so fantastic that that also drew me to it. So I'd heard of the author, I'd vaguely heard of this book, but it was mostly a beautiful title, beautiful cover choice. So I guess the question is like, can we judge a book by its cover? Like do beautiful covers equal wonderful books that I'm going to enjoy? Slash, will reading these make me feel more like that girl? Stay tuned, let's find out. First book down. It's called You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And I am not feeling beautiful today, but you know what? This is a beautiful book. We are starting this one out with a banger because this was fantastic. I gave this four and a half stars. Basically, is this a romance? Yes, in the sense that it is principally about relationship and that it has an HFN. It is not structured like a typical genre romance. And I found that actually really refreshing. This also involves some like cheating stuff, which is normally not my gig. But again, Amezi like sold me on this. So basically the setup is our main character, Faye, just realized that my sim card is full. So let's change that out first. Okay, sorry about that. Faye is a widow and she married young, her husband died in an accident young, and she has been grieving for the last five years. She hasn't dated, hasn't put herself out there. This book opens with her officially getting herself back out on the market with this dude she meets at a party named Milan, and, the, and they like, they go to pound town immediately. I thought it was like a very, it was such a well-written sex scene because it was both like, okay, and also I feel like you learned a lot about her from that sex scene. So she then ends up in a relationship. She's like with him for a while. She ends up in a mm, ambiguous friendship relationship-ish. Friendship slash we're on the road to being together path with this guy named Nasir. And he takes her home to the islands to meet his dad named Alim. And she immediately when she sees Alim is like, oh, fuck. I am into this guy. And so it's like her putting herself back out there and having these three different situations slash relationships. We don't get the end game dude until, I don't know, a third of the way through the book. I don't know. The writing in this is absolutely beautiful. It was both really sad and poetic, but also made me laugh out loud in several places. I don't know. I just found this to be really refreshing. I don't know. I've not read a contemporary romance in a while that I felt was different meaningfully than what I normally read. And I did feel that about this. I wouldn't give it a full five star just because I do have ambivalence about the whole cheating aspect. And I don't know that this scratched the same itch that a genre romance would typically scratch for me. 
but it was still, I mean, it is a romance. I don't know. It was just different. And I really, really liked it. So, so far, judging a book by its cover is working out for me because this was excellent. So, yeah, number one, big success. Okay, so I'm making some boba and I am gonna talk to you about The Splendid City by Karen Hewler. And we started this off with a very high note, which was, you made a fool of death with your beauty. That was fantastic. The Splendid City, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced on it. So the setup is, we're, it, okay, I should mention, all of this should be noted that it is meant to be satire very clearly. So I want to give it at least a little bit of leeway with that, but it is dystopian magical future where Texas has split off from the US and is a state called Liberty. And our main character is a witch who turned her lecherous, disgusting coworker into a like a talking cat. And he has a gun and he's always trying to shoot people with it. Somebody like, so she gets kicked out of her coven basically for using her magic for evil and not for good. So then cut to somebody, I think her name is Daria, goes missing from her coven and she is going to work with Stan the cat to get it, to get the person back. That's the setup. This is meant to be satire. I don't know if the humor just wasn't quite for me or what I actually think is the case. I don't know that this was a satire that was fully realized. There's a lot of interesting ideas in here, I think, about authoritarianism and environmentalism and, I don't know, like a number of different interesting, like kind of big idea things. But I just don't think that it actually came together that successfully. I didn't think it was very funny and clearly the book thought it was being funny. So that, you know, your mileage may vary, but I do think also just there wasn't enough meat on the bones of this satire to pull it through. And then it also does something really bizarre, which is like halfway through, it just starts to give you an info, like this, the beginning of this novel, you have the setup that's already happened that I just described. Like she did, she turned him into a cat in the past. But then all of a sudden the story comes to like a grinding halt and we get these flashbacks to like how that happened. And I thought that was a not successful or strong choice. I just, this really did not come together. So have I read worse books? Yes. Have I read like more offensive books? Yes. I like some of the ideas in here. I do still like the cover a lot, but I'm going to give this a two star. I did not think that this was that great. Yeah, not for me. And maybe if you like the humor better, you would like it more than I did, but I do still stand by that. I just don't know that the satire was fully successful. So one big hit and one big miss so far. So we are done with When I'm Gone Look For Me in the East by Quan Berry, which 
was a really lovely read. So I've read one, ooh, it's over here, one other book from Quanberry that I really, really enjoyed earlier this year, which is We Ride Upon Sticks. And this is one of the most unique books I've ever read uh, in the sense that it's told in a first person plural, so we. And it's in the 80s and it's this field hockey team who sells their soul to the devil. It's a very wacky book. And uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. And one of the things that stood out to me in this was the writing, which is what I've also found is true for When I'm Gone Look For Me in the East, because the writing is really the star of the show here. Quan Berry is a poet as well as a novelist, and you can really feel that influence in the prose from her. I really just love it. It's very, it's lyrical without being flowery, which I think is a hard line to walk. And something else I enjoyed about this is that it's told basically in almost entirely two page vignettes. And so it reads really quickly, especially for something that I would say is kind of like a more literary novel. Sometimes those can be a little slower reading. I think because of the way she chose to pace the chapters, it made it feel like a very quick read. Basically, the setup for this is our main character is Chulun, who is a Mongolian Buddhist monk, and his twin Moon is considered to be the reincarnation of a Lama. Not the Dalai Lama, but a Lama. And so a lot of this book is about the different choices that the twins make. They also have kind of a telepathic power between them, which uh, kind of harkened back to me to We Ride Upon Sticks because there's sort of a psychic connection between all of the girls in that one. Ostensibly, this is them along with three others going to find, to like vet children who might be other reincarnated llamas and like figure out if they actually are. That's sort of like theoretically what the book is about, but it doesn't, I mean, it's just very, it's like a character study basically. And there were just, I mean, there's some lovely moments in this, I think particularly towards the end where, well, I don't wanna give anything away, but I really, I liked the ending of this quite a bit and sort of where the it leaves the two of them and how they come to an understanding about the differences in their life experience, even though they're twins. And yeah, I don't know. I just thought that this was really beautiful. Did I love it? Did it connect with me sort of to the degree that it'll be one of my favorites, super, super memorable? I would say no, but I feel like if you're looking for maybe like approachable literary fiction, I might recommend this because like I said, it reads really quickly. She, it's not as, I think part of what I loved about We Write Upon Sticks was the wackiness of it and the kind of humor. There's moments of that, but that's not so much the tone of this one. So that I think is what kept me from just absolutely loving this. I was between a three and a half and a four. And now that we're talking this through, I'm like, okay, yeah, this feels more like a three and a half. But yeah, I mean, I would recommend this to people. I think that it's really well done. I will definitely continue to look for things from Quan Berry because I think her books are pretty unique. Also never read a book set in Mongolia before. So that was kind of cool. And yeah, I mean, I feel like the a cover being guided by the cover, I will say in combination with knowing it was an author that I enjoyed, um, I think did me pretty well in this case. So yeah, I think three and a half now that we've talked this through feels right. And I would call this one a success.
we're done. I finished a magic steeped in poison this morning as I was waking up and this was really charming. So this is definitely, I'd say that this is not upper YA. This reads like true YA and it is a high fantasy novel that is rooted in basically a magic system around teas and food which I thought was really fun. Like I really liked the magic system in this a lot. Basically our main character Ning, her mother was killed um, through a poison in a tea and her sister is dying of the same poison. So she decides to enter this competition to become like the head, basically like tea master kind of person for the princess of this empire. If she wins, the princess has promised whoever wins will like get a favor from her. So yeah, that's kind of like the setup. So it's a lot with the competition. I would say that this is one of those competition kind of magic stories that truly is very focused on the competition. So if that's something that has frustrated you in other books, um, I would say that this one handles that pretty well. I really enjoyed the world, the magic. I will say it took me a while to warm up with the characters. This is not that long. I'd say that there's not as much time as you might get in some other stories for the characters to really like breathe. I will say though, by the end of the book, I felt like I was really connecting with the characters. I did not realize this was the beginning of a series. So I accidentally just added a book to my series TBR because I really did like this. I think this is a good version of what it is. I wouldn't say like it had the wow factor that made me just love it. But I would say that I very much enjoyed this more so than I have some other YA fantasy uh, that I've been trying recently. See my do I even like YA style vlog. So yeah, I actually quite enjoyed this and I would keep going in the series. So that does it for the books. Um, I'm about to start work, so I need to do that. But I feel like we should regroup and talk about like some of my thoughts about this as an experiment of purely going based on uncover slash aesthetic. Okay, so we have come to the end of this project and if I were gonna force rank them, I think this is probably the ordering. In terms of thought process or thinking about the kind of concept of the video, I filmed like a long diatribe that I'm not gonna include about class and privilege in this because I just feel like I didn't go anywhere with it. But I do, this was making me think about the fact that sometimes when I'm looking at my books, I enjoy, I do enjoy beautiful books, obviously. You guys know that I collect Penguin Clothbound classics because I like the aesthetics. Like I love the aesthetic of a certain kind of bookish ambiance. But for some reason, I always feel sort of like my version of bookish ambiance isn't, as cool as other people's are. And this was sort of an exercise in like, hey, can I buy my way into feeling like I have that aesthetic? And I just, I don't know that you can, or I don't know, none of this makes sense. I feel like I'm just not doing a good job of summarizing my thoughts. Basically, I feel like there are certain book covers that have a certain look to them that present well on social media. And I realized that that was driving most of these choices with the exception, I would say, of The Splendid City. Like this drew me to it, not because of dominant social media posting cover aesthetic. This was more like, ooh, this is quirky and I'm drawn to the quirkiness of it and it has elements on it that interest me. So this one, I think probably not as much as the others Did I realize that I was being heavily influenced by social media to get, but all three of these, I think I was. And some of it I think is the bright colors. Like I've realized in terms of what I like in a beautiful book cover, I really like these vibrant, beautifully colored covers. Like that's something that I find really appealing to me, but also I think something that photographs really well and therefore, are easy things to include in a social media posting. Yeah, maybe that's kind of where I should just leave it because I feel like none of my ramblings on this are making a lot of sense. But I did enjoy this project. I would say in terms of can you judge books by their covers? I mean, the reason why these have the covers they have is because they're trying to attract a certain audience. You know what, maybe that's just it. Some, okay, I just had a connection. This kind of cover is very aesthetically pleasing, but it is not really my kind of book. 
Like it's an exception rather than a rule. So the reason why I see like, I see these kind of covers all the time on Instagram and I'm like, oh, why don't my books look that cool? That's because I read a lot more genre things that don't have this kind of cover and they have a different kind of cool cover, but not one that I think is as TikTokable or Instagrammable. So maybe that's part of it. It's just that my reading taste doesn't always support beautiful book covers. Now, I will say these two, which I very much enjoyed, this one is more genre and it's a different kind of approach to a genre cover. So maybe that's part of why this is kind of the best of both worlds of the kind of book I really enjoy along with the kind of cover I really enjoy. And then this is literary, but it is a literary romance. And again, happens to have the kind of aesthetic that I think makes a good aspirational post, but it also happens to be in a genre I enjoy. So maybe maybe that's the finding is I just don't like the genres that have the covers that I think are the most beautiful. So there you go, if any of that made sense. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this random experiment. And I think in general, book covers are there to sell you on the bookish content. So it's interesting to think about how that content versus the marketing do or don't mesh. So anyway, let me know what you thought about these books. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.